Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, I'm recording this very late at night. It's almost 1 a.m. It's like 12.30 a.m. Uh, so I have my volume cranked up for my mic and my, my voice is very low because I do not want to wake anybody as I'm still stuck in an apartment for now. <clears throat> so if I, if I seem a little bit mellow, please understand why. But this is pretty big deal right now. Um, I don't have much of time. I don't have much time to watch other content creators, nor do I care about watching other red pill content creators because uh, I do my own thing. Um, and and so this came out actually a couple of weeks ago. And Brittany Venti's videos only gotten about sixty thousand views, which is not enough coverage. I think this is something that everybody needs to know and needs to see and needs to hear. So I'm going to share it. Now, the way I got into this is while I was walking the dogs today, um, I let, sometimes I just let my subscription feed on uh, YouTube or Rumble. Usually I play it on Rumble first. I let it play and I listen to podcasts and Abba and Preach were calling out um, uh, pearly things because they were having a back and forth with her and they called her out on something and they were right. And I have the clip. I'm going to play the clip. And then I'm going to explain how that got me into this. Now, Brittany's video is 40 minutes long. It is a good video. If you want to see the whole thing at normal speed with her, all her commentary, again, I'm posting the links down below. I'm putting my own commentary in here. So if I don't get to the video as quick as you want, just go watch hers. Don't bother bitching here, please. So here's the, the piece that I was watching by um, Abin Preach, Preach that got me thinking like, wait a minute. Something's not right here. There's something going on that seems strange. So let me play this clip. Um, this is their clip. I, I cut it at the beginning and the end of what they played. Um, and I've told this story like many times on my channel, so I'm just going to tell it again. Uh, there's a relative of mine, and um, this relative was married for 50 years. And um, this woman did not believe in divorce. Like it, it, it was just not an option in her book. And her husband actually left the family for another woman. And she she prayed to God for a solution because that, that was her belief. She did not believe in marriage. Sorry, she did not believe in divorce. So her husband um, leaves and the side chick died. He came home and she didn't throw it over his head. She asked where they went wrong in the marriage and how they could fix it. And that's the thing. Like a lot of times people in our generation are so quick to throw in the, in the towel. Okay, so she's, she, you hear the story. And she says this woman had husband left her and the family, goes out and gets a side chick. The side chick passes. And then he comes to the back to the family. And she's like, how can we fix this? And, and what do we need to improve? <clears throat> and she's using that as an example of a positive, of a, of a good story. The reason why that doesn't resonate is because if you flip the genders and, and she was telling a story about a man that left the family or excuse me, a woman that left the family and went out and got a side dude. And then after he, he passes, she comes back to the family saying, hey, I want back in. She would tell her men, the men that watch her channel, she would say, don't take her back. You're a simp if you do. You're weak if you do. You shouldn't take him back. Or excuse me, you shouldn't take her back. But here she's saying that, <clears throat> that, because the woman didn't like divorce, she should take the guy back. That seems like a double standard. And that's talking against a woman's own interest. In other words, just pearly things, Pearl here, is kind of acting like a male feminist and that male feminists put themselves down so that they seem more appealing and more appeasing uh, to, to women. And that's what just pearly things is doing here because I think you guys know me well enough that if I said, uh, either way, this story, if I said, if a man left to do this, I'd say she shouldn't take him back. She should bounce on him. Like it, he's not going to support the family and he leaves. He's not a good family man. And he only comes back after she, the, 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 the side chick like passes. You shouldn't do that to somebody you love. I think you guys know, I'd, I'd say things like that. I don't think that's a, a far stretch to say. And if a woman did it, you, you, you'd know damn well, I'd be saying the same thing of don't take her back. So pearly things didn't seem, she didn't seem to be square on this one. So that got me digging around. I said, I said, something's not right here. Something smells fishy. So I started digging around and I came up with a bunch of articles. Now I'm going to read the articles in context with Brittany's video. Um, so we'll do a little bouncing back and forth because I was about 20 or 30% through making my video and, and scraping up the content to do my video. 
and, I, and because I was in YouTube typing in just pearly things, looking for various qu uh, clips, Brittany's video popped up and I watched it and I went, Brittany's done all the work for me. Brittany's already dug and found the receipts. So for me to find the receipts as well is kind of stupid. So I will give Brittany Venti a great thank you for doing all this hard digging. And again, if you go over and watch your video, I've left it below, at least go watch it for a couple of minutes, see what she says and give her the credit of a view and a thumbs up and a, a thanks for, for doing the hard work she did because this is the kind of stuff uh, that needs to be played. Now you guys know I don't have anything against Pearly and, and I'm gonna have a hot take at the end of this you may not agree with, I'll just be honest with you. I think many of you may disagree with my hot take, but I, I, I still think it's a, a concept that has value and I'll be doing that at the end of this. All right, so uh, she started right out, this is right at the beginning of her video and I'll just start it here. I'll try to adjust the volume so I don't blast your ears out. Oh, that All right, you gotta go, man. You gotta go. Right, you gotta go. You're wild. Okay, so the first second there was uh, Fresh and Fit kicking a woman out off their podcast, and this is just pearly things doing the same thing. <laughs> this might be your platform, but respect okay, people when they come Okay, 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 goodbye. Go, go, go. go. Cool, you are proud of me, bro. So that's why she's angry. Get out, get out. Get the, get the, f get the, f out. that clip you just watched is of Hannah Pearl Davis, a 26 year old YouTuber, the latest addition to the Manosphere, often referred to as the female Andrew Tate. Pearl runs a YouTube channel centered around the Manosphere, hosting some of the classiest women our society has to offer. Right, let's go there. You want to go back in the past and embarrass yourself again? Put up the screen. Go go what you want. Let's go. Pearl's channel is heavily inspired by Kevin Samuels and Fresh and Fit. Women in general, especially in the United States, England, whatever it may be, are not held accountable for their poor decisions. Men are trash. That's common in society, right? Women are trash isn't. Men are held accountable all the time, every day. All these women are born with value. They're pretty already. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. Women are born with value. Men must create their value. A guy doesn't lose his value just because he picks the wrong woman once. Just men are attracted to youth, beauty, and fertility. It's been that way since the beginning of time. Men, men value purity and youth. Purity, youth, beauty. You can really get those. So let me just pause it here for a second. So what Brittany put together there um, was pretty much um, kind of what you heard Kevin Samuels say. Of course, Kevin's not with us anymore. You've heard Fresh and Fit say. You've heard Andrew Tate say, you've heard me say, you've heard Sandman say, you've heard Turd Flinging Monkey say, you've heard uh, Coach Greg Adams say, <clears throat> Donovan Sharp has said, the list goes on and on and on. By, and, and many more channels that have been around a lot longer than I've been around. So many of you could say, yeah, dude, but you say the same, same stuff and you got it from those OGs as well. Yeah, you're correct. And, and I won't deny that. But the difference is I've also lived the experience and the difference is I'm also a man. So it affects me. She has no, she has no um, knowledge of any of this firsthand. So what she's really doing is kind of regurgitating what others have said already. And again, look, look you guys know I don't have a problem with pearly things. And I've said in the past, I think she is a good overall. But again, that'll be in my hot take at the end of this if you stick around to watch it. So let's listen to what she says. This brain juice is flowing as you tune into yet another episode of the groundbreaking discussion, What's Wrong with Modern Women? Which are about as thought provoking as an episode of Jerry Springer. Or alternatively, if that gets boring, you can tune into an episode of Why Men Cheating is Actually Okay. Right, men really have to work to become a- Let me, let me pause here for a second. I've, I've done thumbnail, now again, I don't necessarily agree with Brittany on some of these things. Um, I'm using her vid video for her great sleuthing skills and uh, putting it all together for me. I've done videos where I where my thumbnail is what's wrong with dating modern women today. I don't think there's any problem with that per se. You know, I don't think there's any problem with that. Um, but I think where the problem lies is again that Pearly Things is a modern woman. She is a young modern woman, and and you'll see how that ties into everything here shortly. Into an episode of why men cheating is actually okay. Right, men really have to work to become attractive. That's why I laugh at y'all when you tell me, well, men shouldn't cheat and they shouldn't do this. Men have to bust their ass to become attractive to even be seen. What if a woman cheats? Can men accept that? She belongs to the street. You don't think it's different for men and for women cheating? No. I actually think that like women like to be cheated on. But Pearl didn't always have these takes. So again, very similar lines between the two. Now, Fresh and Fit, when they first started their podcast, they did a lot of, yes, they did the interviews with the women. And, but they'd have a lot more guest spots from men. And they like when I went to uh, their studio, they had about 60,000 followers. And I said, hey, you guys, I think are onto something. You know, I think you've got something good. I think you're going to blow up. I, I bet you'll be at a half million followers by the end of the first year. I was right. And matter of fact, I might have been even a little low. They grew like wildfire. 
Why? Because they would bring women in and they would expose the women for their hypocrisy. And we men like to see that. It's very validating to say, hey, we're right, you're wrong. You feed right into the way that that, that society seems to, to express men and express women. Like you, you fall right into that. And that's why Fresh and Fit started doing so well. Now, again, all other controversies aside, that's what they do. What's Andrew Tate do? He does the same thing. He comes from a place of men and women are different. Here's how, and um, and and pearly things from and and we'll get into this here shortly. Pearly things changed her video and her video content to be and to to resonate with more of the fresh and fit and Andrew Tate. And and I've went back and looked at some of her older videos. I'm not. She's got some examples here. I'm not going to pull that out, but she is correct in that she's changed her 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 words on many things. I have too, and I've changed my format. We all change our formats. Things change over time. But again, just kind of just kind of see what how she puts it out there for us. In fact, she used to say the polar opposite, especially about Fresh and Fit, who she is now emulating. I know a lot of girls that actually waited until they were married and stayed a virgin until they were married. And I can tell you that the guys on Fresh and Fit podcast would never, they would never be able to pull a girl like that. It's interesting. Okay, so I know there's a lot of white noise because she's driving in her car, but she says, I know, I know a lot of women a lot of them that are virgins and fresh and fit could never pull a woman like that. But, but now her message is much more similar to, you know, men that uh, are ballers and gamers and have money and have status can pull any women that they want to. And they have access to almost any woman because they're top one or five or 10 percenter. She says that now. So her views have changed. But my question is, why did her views change? She's been on YouTube, what, a couple of years, and she she has no real world experience or dating experience herself. So the only way her views would change would be by talking to other men or listening to other channels, and that's fine. But that means that the knowledge that she's spreading is not her own, it's obviously, it's gleaned from other content creators. Now, maybe she presents it in a way that more people like. Maybe she presents it, you know, coming from a female. But the problem is that, again, did her mind really change? Or is she just speaking the lines because she knows it's getting her views and clicks and making her quite a lot of money? And as a matter of fact, even making it to Insider Magazine. As Andrew Tate languishes in prison, in jail, a new celebrity anti-feminist creator is filling the gap. Unlike him, she's a woman. So now she's a celebrity all of a sudden. An insider magazine, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's a great magazine or anything. I, when was the last time you know of a red pill content creator that got interviewed by mainstream? The only one I can think of ever is Rolo Tomasi. I think he's the only one. Maybe Kevin Samuels occasionally, but I don't remember seeing too much about that. So all of a sudden, she's now the new darling in the media because it's a woman speaking this kind of thing. I'm just making, I'm just pointing that out. Interesting, considering that Pearl's current branding revolves around telling women that their standards are too high and that if you want a high value man that you have to tolerate him cheating. People think I'm condoning cheating. People think I'm encouraging cheating. No. Like I think if a woman cheats, she's trying to leave you. If a man cheats, yes, yes, yes. he's just like, he's it's, like it's like a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> women act like this is the most unforgivable thing that he is the ultimate bad guy, the ultimate demon if he does this. I'm sorry, sometimes you contributed to it. And women take no accountability for that. And that he wants to go to the bar with his buddies because you make that shit a hell hole. Because you are so unpleasant to be around. And that man forgives you for all of that shit, but you can't forgive him for stepping out once, twice. You guys are, you guys are crazy. Okay. And then, and then again, see, a lot of these clips I haven't seen from Pearly Things. Or I keep calling her Pearly Things from Pearly. From Pearl. Sorry. It's late at night. It's 1 a.m. A lot of these clips I haven't seen from Pearl. But what she's saying, again, is in the worst interest of women. Like, it's not that she's just pro-man. She's anti-woman. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm against women acting the fools. And I'm against women, um, you know, doing negative things to men. But I'm not against women as a whole. Because really, that makes us no better than the feminists. That does make you kind of a... a, a a misandrist type person. 
you know, that, or excuse me, a misogynistic type person when you're against women like that. And what she says there is, well, if you're, if you're always nagging your husband and he just wants to go out and have a beer with the boys and, and you're making the, the, the home front argumentative and awful, can you blame him for cheating on you? And also it's no big deal if he cheats one or two times. Uh, I'm gonna play this again and so you can hear, hear it coming from, from that place. Because that's, that's taking things darker and, and harder against women than I ever have. Yet somehow, yet somehow she's, she's championed and, and guys like us that, that talk about issues are, we're called the bad ones. I might have, yeah. <laughs> Women act like this is the most unforgivable thing, that he is the ultimate bad guy, the ultimate demon if he does this. I'm sorry, sometimes you contributed to it. And okay, so she's saying that the, the uh, women act like it is the ultimate awful thing for a man to step out on them. Like, it's okay to let him cheat it, because you're a pain in the ass. That doesn't seem natural for what a woman, it doesn't even seem nat natural for what a lot of men would say, especially guys in, in this community. And women take no accountability for that. And that he wants to go to the bar with his buddies because you make that shit a hell hole because you are so unpleasant to be around. And that man forgives you for all of that shit, but you can't forgive him for stepping out once, twice, is it me or is there a difference between an argu argumentative wife or maybe somebody that doesn't keep the house clean versus someone to step out and cheat? Because again, if we roll reverse this and the guy says, uh, you know what? Yeah, we got an argument a little every once in a while or she got mad at me uh, that I didn't mow the lawn. So she went out and slept with my neighbor or she went out to the club and slept with somebody. Would it be okay to tell that guy to put up with it? I think we'd all say no. So why is it okay to say that a woman should put up with that? It's, it's a very weird double standard and, it, and it's, I think it's wrong. Like I, 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 don't think, I don't think that's conducive to anyone's mental health or relationship. She's actually, she's actually telling men bad advice and she's telling women bad advice. I don't think a woman should allow her husband to go out and cheat on her a couple of times just because she's maybe a pain in the ass. Like, how about saying maybe don't be so argumentative or to chill out or learn some communication skills, not go out and step out on your, on your husband or your wife. I, I think that's crazy. But, but again, I think she's trying to be edgy and I think she's trying to be, to maybe corner that segment of the market again, that Tate and, and Fresh and Fit and some of the more aggressive extreme examples go after because she's going to get likes and she's going to get dislikes. But even people that dislike her may watch her, which is another view, which is more money, uh, which is uh, on TikTok. I mean, uh, TikTok, you know, rewards those viewed the most. And Howard Stern once said um, that when, when they asked him, when they were looking at the demographics or, or the, the demos, as they call them, of who listened to Howard Stern, uh, and it was it was in a movie. I don't know if this is completely accurate, but they said the average viewer listens to, or the person that likes him listens two hours. And the person said, well, what about the person that hates him? And they're like, oh, they listen to him three and a half hours. Because, you know, people want to see love, hate. They want to feel emotion when they're engaged in this stuff. And that feels like what she's pushing for. You guys are, you guys are crazy. Uh, it's just a little cheating. No biggie. I think it's safe to say that Pearl has changed her business plan in order to make money off of the manosphere because people's opinions don't normally change so drastically in morality, especially in such a short amount of time. Now, uh, I think in the original video, she highlighted this, but again, Pearl's only, uh, Pearl's only been around for like two years, maybe three years now. Um, and which means at the age of 23 to 26, all of a sudden she's had these serious life revelation, uh, revelations. Um, while mostly not dating, like that doesn't, how do you, how do you, how does your mind change? I would say the only way it would change is again, now maybe she did change her mind. Maybe she didn't. She's either being dishonest and just talk using the talking points to, uh, generate more views and more clicks, more money, more revenue, or she has had a life change, but where did that life change come from? It didn't come from her own knowledge. It came from her listening and watching other men's issues. In other words, you never ask a fish how to catch fish. You ask a fisherman, fishing fisherman, you, you ask the fisherman. 
what Pearly thing things is or what Pearly's doing is she's at, she's asking the fisherman, and then when people ask her how do you catch a fish, she's saying what the fisherman told her. In other words, like maybe she's changing her mind, but she's she has no life experience to to speak from. So where's she getting this information of to to have all this knowledge? Pearl even talks about this business plan in an interview with Yahoo News saying that she didn't know what her business would be yet, but basically that she wanted to be an influencer and build a brand. The plan? Make money off of single men on YouTube by regurgitating their talking points about women back to them as a woman. Now, let me pause it here for a second. So I did look up, I, this is actually an article I had pulled up on my own before I, I saw Britney's stuff. Why did we break up? 23-year-old TikToker helps the, the love lorn get answers from their exes. And they talk about, you know, her giving out the survey and other things like that. Um, but she says here, and this is at the age of 23. Let me see if I can find the segment. She said, Davis herself has yet to send the quiz to anyone in her past. This is a quiz about, uh, that asked a bunch of questions about like, why'd we break up? Why'd you cheat? Whatever. And, and so this was what she got big for on TikTok. And she said, uh, she has not sent it to anyone in her past. And she said, I've actually not had a boyfriend that was serious enough for me to send it to, hence why I had my followers take it. The only long term I can think of is a guy I talked to for a couple of years in college. I do not think he would take it, she says, adding that if he sent it to her, she would like uh, she would likely respond to him, in other words. So she hasn't had any serious relationships at the age of 23. This was written in... Uh, September, uh, September 30th of 2020. So this is only two and a half years ago, right? She hasn't had any serious relationships up to that point, according to her, according to her. And she only had the only long-term relationship I can think of is a guy I talked to. Were they dating? I mean, did she only talk to him? Did that mean that it was a, like a, 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 an orbiter, a friends with benefit, a hookup dude, or you actually dated him? Like to, to say it was only a dude I was talking to is like, that's not, that's nothing. And she does say right here, the Milwaukee-based TikToker even has more plans. Having recently quit her sales job to pursue media, Davis plans to continue growing her account as well as launching a website and YouTube channel all under Just Pearly Things. Additionally, she plans to study digital media management in uh, Bournemouth, England, early next year. She also wants to eventually get on board with some sponsored content and selling products, hoping to collaborate with brands she's already a fan of, like Chipotle. She said, I have not figured out the details yet, but the goal is definitely to make it a business. So before she knew what she was going to talk about, men's issues, men's rights, dating, divorce, before any of that, she knew she was taking business and media, digital media management, and she wanted definitely wanted to get on board with selling uh, sponsored content and selling products. She had the business plan in place before she knew what she was going to do with her channel. Now, again, maybe it's one of those things where she said, well, you know, I, I knew what I was going to do. I just, I, I hadn't formed it yet. But this is, a, this is an area that's been, I mean, a lot of men's channels. When I was first on YouTube, three, what, three years ago now, four years ago? I forget when I first started my channel. I don't even know when I started my own channel. Uh, there was not a ton of men's content. You know, I, there were like maybe five, six, seven big channels and then a lot of smaller ones. It was, uh, and, and it has exploded over the last three years because a lot of men like listening to this type of content. If she did any other content, she'd be like everybody else. But because she chose to do men's content and there really weren't any women in that segment, she put herself in a very good place. I'm sure that's something you learn in digital media a management. Not saying that's what she did, but it is, it is interesting. It's something to pay attention to. Yeah. You're probably wondering by now, where is Pearl's ring? 
Well, I'm here to inform you that Pearl is single and unmarried at 26 years old. And the reason I decided to go to therapy is because um, in the next like five to seven years, ideally, you know, um, some things are out of your control, but ideally I'd like to be married. Which, according to her, is because she is too picky. You're single over a certain age, you're probably too picky. And I say that it's because she's too picky because she claims that 28 years old is pretty old to be getting married. What do men value? Third thing men value, youth. How are they getting youth when the average age of first marriage for women in the U.S. is 28.6 years old? Pearl is lucky. Okay, let me just pause it here for a second. So she starts her YouTube channel at 23, or she says she's going to do this at 23. And now she's 26. The people she's dated were not marriage material. She says that you have to have your youth, but her youth is leaving. And she even says, how is anybody going to be 28 years old? And, and Brittany does mention this. How's anybody going to be 28 years old and expect to find the winner? But she's doing it herself. This is the problem with listening or asking a fish how to fish. She's running out of time herself. She's not married. She's not in a long-term uh, relationship. And she's done nothing to secure a long-term relationship. If she can get married by 28 years old, because she's 26, and even if she met Mr. Right today, you would still usually have to be engaged for at least a year. And then usually people, if they're going fast, wait another year before getting married, putting her at 28 years old, if they're going fast by today's standards. And Pearl does- I'm just going to pause it there. She's right. You know, she is right. It, it is a it is a double standard that Pearl herself is telling men what they want to hear, but she's not living up to her own standards, which is you know that's that's kind of key. Watch what people do, not what what they say. Um, and the, uh, what was the other thing she said? Oh, and she said, I, um, I I've, I've been going to a therapist. Let me replay this part. Should should you listen to somebody that's in therapy? Now I don't know what she's going to therapy for. But what if it's relationship problems? What if it's life problems? What if, what if it's anxiety or panic or anything else? She's, I mean, again, this is kind of my take on it, but do you want to really get advice from somebody that, that is getting advice from somebody else about something they can't deal with or handle? And the reason I decided to go to therapy is because um, in the next like five to seven years, ideally, you know, um, some things are out of your control, but ideally I'd like to be married. Which So she, the reason I decided to go to therapy is because in the next five to seven years, I'd like to get married, but some things are out of your control. So she's going to a therapist to discuss relationship stuff, getting married, finding a, a relationship, like what's going on? And then she's going to turn right around within, I mean, that was on one of her YouTube videos. So while she's in therapy to try to get advice about getting married or finding a relationship, she's turning around and telling men what they need to do to find somebody. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. She can get married by 28 years old, be engaged for at least a year. Wait, it doesn't have much long-term experience. Okay, here's, here's her take. And Pearl doesn't have much long-term experience in dating either. According to this interview on Yahoo News and what Pearl says online about her dating experiences on various podcasts, she's only had a couple of boyfriends. If you can do the math of her being 23 in the Yahoo interview, they couldn't have been that long considering she just turned 26 in the past couple of months. And that got me interested in knowing who is Pearl picking considering that anytime a guy does something wrong, no matter what it is, she tells women to simply just pick better. Okay. Okay. Let me, uh, hold on. So the, the, so uh, she just read what I was talking about before. Um, the Where the catch-22 is, again, is uh, what... When Brittany says this right here, let me. Interested in knowing who is Pearl picking, considering that anytime a guy does something wrong, no matter what it is, she tells women to simply just pick better. Okay. Right. So this, I want you to really pay attention to what she says here, because what Pearlie says versus what she does is really key. And again, at the end of this, I'm going to break a lot more of this down. I just want to shovel all the information into your head so that as I have my conversation or what I bring up, the subject matter and put a cap on everything we're all we're both on the same page women to simply just pick better okay so then you pick guys that cheat i discovered that last year pearl tweeted about a breakup she had so i decided to go ahead and check the archives baby when did we start dating yep that's right an obese man with two children on tiktok and i point out that he's obese because pearl is constantly dunking on fat girls why do i need to look at your roles and then i have to go on social media then boom whale Boom, another whale. The cherry on top is that Pearl has been pretty adamant about men having children being a deal breaker for her. For me personally, I don't, I'm not into the guys with kids. That's not my thing. Instead of immediately breaking up with him for hiding two whole children from her, she instead takes him in to live with her and her family to mooch off of them. Because, he, you know, he was homeless when I first met yeah. him. So I like moved him into my parents' house yeah. so he could get an ID. Too. Yeah. And so my Shall parents put him like on our lease. Aww. So that was how.
out like and they like moved him in for like he lived with us for like a month meanwhile okay let me pause it there so who 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 are they talking about they're talking about this guy right here all right now his his name i don't need this article anymore so i can get rid of that his name is um Onaya or Onaya Johnson. Now, man 22 who earned 1 million TikTok followers in 24 hours with funny angry reaction videos reveals he is homeless and has been living in his car while filming the viral clips. And and you just heard her say, uh, we we let a home this the guy that she's dating who was homeless live with her family while for a month or so and even put him on the lease, I guess she said. Uh she that her family did that for him so this is onaya johnson 22 years old now this story this story came out september 3rd but in the previous actually let me read open this up uh, this other but in the previous article here right where she talks about where she talks about uh starting the youtube channel and all this other stuff this was on september 30th so right around the same time that she's doing this interview and saying she wants to start a business on YouTube and get going on TikTok and get brand deals. This guy blows up right around the same time. So he blows up just as she's starting her YouTube stuff. And, and that will come into, that'll come into some importance here shortly. Anyway, this guy, uh, here's his story, right? However, what many of Johnson's fans are unaware is he's been filming his viral videos in his car and other people's homes as he's currently homeless. He told BuzzFeed News that his former landlord evicted him from the rental he shared with his ex, Jillian, in Michigan a few months ago. According to both Johnson and Jillian, neighbors had complained a number of times about their loud shouting matches and their fights. It doesn't say fights in this article, but it was in another one. I'm just so you don't think I'm throwing words in here uh, and allegedly called the cops. So he was fighting and yelling with his ex girlfriend so much and so loud that he got arrested or excuse me, that he got kicked out of his apartment because the landlord got tired of it. Does that sound like a positive male role model or does that sound like a bad boy? I don't know. Johnson noted there were never any charges pressed against him and Jillian confirmed that they're on good terms Onaya's big and his voice is bigger than mine, so neighbors could only hear him. And that's why he was the only one that was evicted. The former couple has two children together, and she's since moved to Lafayette so they can work on their relationship. Let me read that again. She has since moved to Lafayette so they can work on their relationship. So they're still kind of together at this point. She said she's proud of his success. Now remember... This is going back to September 30th, I think I said, September 30th of 2020. So two and a half years ago, he went back to try to work it out with her. But he has two kids and he got kicked out of his apartment because of fights. Sounds kind of like a toxic dude, right? Sounds kind of like you could say a bad boy. They say same thing here. He gained a million followers in one day. And before you know it, he was a very rich and very successful YouTuber. Had a lot of money. That'll come in just a moment. Pearl is out here humble bragging about her bagging a rich one on podcasts. Oh, he, was, he was a millionaire. Like, it was just like... Oh, uh, let, me, let me say this too. Sorry, uh, I forgot about this part. But So she says she's dating the homeless dude, right? Well, next thing you know, uh, and was he really homeless by the time that they got together? I don't know. But... but Next thing you know, he blew up. He's all over TikTok. He's all over YouTube. If he's getting millions of views, again, I didn't check his his uh, uh, stuff here on YouTube. If he's if he's popular, he gets money. So he could have gone from homeless, no money, to making fifty thousand dollars a month in one month. So what are the odds he was still really homeless by the time they started to date? Because again, remember, at the story that was September thirtieth, he was on his way to go meet up with his ex in Lafayette to work on their relationship, he'd already started to blow up, which means he, he was probably already working on his, on his monetization, which means by the time that he and Pearly things like started to meet, even if that was 
one, two, three months later, he would have already, he would have already been bringing in a lot of money. He wouldn't have been homeless anymore. So did he really end up staying at her parents' place? I don't know the answer to any of these, but these are all something you need to say. Something doesn't seem to be adding up here, and now I don't know what's going on. That's all I'm saying out of this. Now, Pearl is out here humble bragging about her bagging a rich one on podcasts. Oh, he, he was a millionaire. Like, it was just like, he, he didn't know what to do with it. How did you never millionaire? He was on social media, and I saw he lived, like, kind of close to me. And so I made, like, videos saying, like, oh, we should, like, hang out. What? Like, have you ever seen those videos of girls, like, shooting their shots at guys? No. Like, publicly? I was on TikToks, and I did a video saying, you know, when he's not doing this, like, comedic bit, he's actually kind of kind of fine. Like, I live in Chicago. You live in Chicago. We should, like, hang out. I am pretty confident that Pearl is referring to her ex, Wanya, in these instances, because Wanya is from Chicago, like the millionaire actually talks about in the video. There are multiple articles saying that Wanya was homeless when he was around 22 years old. There's a small chance that I'm wrong, but it seems that the story does match up. I do find it funny that Pearl dating Wanya, or people know him as Angry Reactions, was framed as her bagging a rich one. Meanwhile, he actually moved on to date a more attractive redhead, and she's still single and unmarried. It's okay, now let me pause it here for a second. So, as I said, uh, she, she says in that clip, um, he was in Chicago, I bagged a millionaire in Chicago, right? Now, whether it's this guy or not, it doesn't matter. But if it is this guy, that means that... She didn't meet him when he was homeless. She wasn't dating him when he was homeless. And so she wouldn't have put him up in the house. If it's the same dude, if it's, and I don't know, I'm just, again, we're just brain candy here, some things to think about. But let's pretend it's a completely different guy. Pearly Things is out there giving men's advice, trying to relate to every man and trying to give dating advice and trying to give relationship advice and trying to tell women what they need to do and to not have such high standards and to bring themselves down a little bit and to be more realistic with your options. In the meantime, she goes out and chases the bad boy who got kicked out, right? He's got two kids. This much we know. I mean, so she is definitely dated a bad boy, definitely dated a dude with two kids. We definitely know that, that this Anaya guy or uh, Johnson or whatever he is, we definitely know he's bringing in bank. How is she different than most other women out there? How is she different than any other women? He's got influence. He's popular. He's got money. Um, he's kind of the bad boy. Like, isn't that kind of what we always say women end up chasing after? And she's doing it to herself. And now she's 26 going to be 27 and 28 soon. She still doesn't even have a serious boyfriend at this point. Doesn't that put her almost at 30 or 28, 29, 30 before she even finds a serious relationship and many gets close? She literally is, is, no, she's a long way from the wall now. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying she doesn't seem real focused on getting the good man and the ring on her finger. As a matter of fact, she's got a new channel now where she's trying to learn all the things that it, that needs to be learned to become a traditional good housewife. Yet she came from a family that had a home that was, I think, 10 bedrooms. She had nine siblings. Both her parents were software developer engineers or something and made tons of money. I'm guessing with nine kids, I'm guessing her mom might have had help. Does that sound like the girl next door that's really reaching down to give men dating advice? Or is she kind of a, being a hypocrite a little bit? Again, these are just questions I'm asking. This is the guy here. I'm going to play this clip. Uh, and sorry, sorry, it's loud. I tried to fix the audio. This is her and him uh, going out to get food. Now, remember, Pearl says, you know, women need to be more respectful. Women need to be nicer to their men. Women need to let them lead all this other stuff that men need to be the alpha in the relationship. Does it sound like he's alpha or is she kind of combative here? Hey guys, me and Wanya are going to Starbucks today and I'm going to take you through what it's like to order with us. Guys, we're supposed to be on a diet, but I really wanted it. I wanted yeah, it so, so she, bad. So I didn't make you. You said you were craving the pink drink. I was huh? craving it, but I knew I didn't need it. And you made me come. Oh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. So she's with a guy that, that again, I have nothing against him. Um, but he's like, you made me do this. You made me come and get this food. Did she really? I don't know. It's trivial. But she, she doesn't sound like the, 
you know, the, the passive nice girl, she's, she's definitely got a little bit of edge and attitude to her, even when in a relationship with the person she's in a relationship with. It seems like her advice on lowering her standards to get married isn't working out so well for her. Pearl has the absolute audacity to tell women to pick better when she literally got catfished by some girl's obese baby daddy on TikTok. Yeah, he has a lot of followers, but he ended up having to mooch off of her anyway, so. Not only does she regularly dunk on obese people, even taunting them in her TikTok bio before she got banned, but Pearl will even put all the blame on women for obesity in America, despite half the obese population in America being men. How can Pearl dunk on fat girls so often, considering that she has clearly neglected her own self-care? This video of her is only from one month ago, and it might surprise you to learn that she's a professional athlete. And despite her lack of self-care, she- Let me pause here for a second. Now, yes, Pearlie is dunking on really, really, really big women. But, but Pearl's, you know, she's not svelte herself. Um, that would be like me dunking on guys that are five foot eight when I'm five foot six. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's not exactly a great idea. Um, so I don't know if I agree with her on this one, but Pearl is, you know, she does talk about being feminine and dressing and pretty. And, and you know, if you want to capture a 1% man, you've got to, have all these, you know, you need to have all, you need to be giving him something. But in the meantime, she acts like she's trying to find a 1% man herself. And because she's not finding anybody. And she does even talk about having too high a standards at some point, like she has too high a standards. So she says she has too high of standards. And then she doesn't look the part. She doesn't dress. She doesn't put on makeup. She doesn't do her hair. She's literally putting in no effort, expecting a top five or 10 percenter. Isn't that what we make fun of women doing all the time as it is? And she's literally doing the same thing herself. How is she any different than all the other women we kind of poke fun of? She still likes to spout a lot of statistics about fat women. Pearl speaks on men valuing attractiveness, purity, and youth, and says in order to get a high value husband or husband at all, you should be those things. Men value purity and youth. Yeah. Purity, youth, beauty. Pearl fails to meet these standards herself, despite wanting to get married so badly. Apparently, if I want results in life, I have to start talking to boys. Yeah, wife me up if you're, if you're in the London area. You know? In terms of purity, Pearl's not a virgin. In fact, she's so reluctant to say her body count that she's willing to just lie. How many people have you slept with? Do you have this up? <laughs> no. You ask everybody that. And you don't say your own number? <laughs> um, no, I don't ask everyone. I don't think I've ever asked. No. Now, first of all, notice she didn't answer right away. She changed to, oh, I don't ask that. She's giving herself time to think. I think, I believe she's giving herself time to think. No, I don't even ask body count. Would you say your body count? Oh, let me let me make sure you hear that whole statement in full. Lie. How many people have you slept with? Do you have this up? <laughs> no. You ask everybody that. And you don't say your own number? <laughs> um, no, I don't ask everyone. I don't think I've ever asked. No, I don't even ask body count. Would you say your body count? Notice how she like just totally didn't tell her body count yet. Now she might further on in the clip. I don't remember. I, I but she says she doesn't ask anybody the, their body count. And she literally does. Your own number? What? Um, no, I don't ask everyone. I don't think I've ever asked. No, I don't even ask body count. Would you say your body count? I, I don't know. No. No. <laughs> no, I don't even ask. Um, I always say how many bodies is too many bodies. So I have a question. Would you guys say your body count? No. So if it doesn't matter, like, why don't people just say it? She chose to lie because she felt embarrassed. And despite Pearl preaching about the importance of women's chastity, Pearl actually wanted to partake. Okay, so let me pause it there. Now, I think in the, I think in the full interview clip, I think the interviewer says single digits. And she quickly goes, uh, yeah, and then they move on. Or maybe they didn't this and I just totally didn't hear it. So she's, she's still saying she's in single digits. Nine is not great by 26, especially when she said at 23, she had no long-term relationships. Now, since then, she's, she's dated a couple people. So maybe her body counts one, that's single digit, or two, that's single digit but she still didn't say her body count. She just laughed and turned her head and kind of shucked it off. I mean, if she had, if she was truly espousing that, that she has the virtues to be able to call out all these other women, shouldn't she be able to talk comfortably about what she's done in her past and the mistakes she's made? And but because she has no, she has nothing to talk about. She doesn't have any experiences herself by the sounds of things. Maybe she does, but she seems like a lot of people haven't heard any of them. 
topic in hookup culture. But I swear to God, like, guys don't try to sleep with me. Really? <laughs> like, 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 I swear to God, I've been on a date, and I, w I would have been dead, and you just never tried. I was like, oh, okay. Okay, let me, let's listen to that again. She says, they, that she's been on dates and the guys didn't even try to sleep with her and she would have been down, but they didn't even try. It comes right at the end and it's very quiet. I swear to God, like guys don't try to sleep with me. Really? <laughs> like, 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 I swear to God, I've been on a date and I, w I would have been down and you just never tried. I, I would have been down, but they just never tried. I've been on dates. That's not a boyfriend. That's not a long-term relationship. I've been on dates and they didn't try. I would have been down. That's hookup culture. She's right. Brit Brittany is right. And this is coming from her own mouth. It seems like she barely knew him and wanted to hook up with him, but he didn't want to. So according to Pearl, I guess we shouldn't be taking her advice considering that she can't attract men even for casual encounters. I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women. And I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> I'm just, this is just something I've noticed. Um, it, uh, but I, again, I haven't spent a ton of time in therapy, but then like, and then I'm like, yeah, like why would I take advice from you if you can't maintain a relationship? Yeah. I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women. And I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> this video took so long to make. I have never researched so much for a video before. So if you do like the content and appreciate me researching her, watching her content for two weeks, consider supporting me on Locals or on Patreon because I am community funded. Props to Brittany for putting together such a well-rounded, well-edited, well-researched video. Good on you, Brittany. You deserve a million views on this video just for the, the research you did because it's literally what I was doing. And then, and then she beat me to the punch by a couple of weeks because, again, I don't watch this stuff. So thank, thanks to Brittany. And again, I'll leave the link down below to the full video. Give her a watch. Give her a thumbs up. Give her a thank you if you if you liked the work she put into this because this is kind of big, you know. Per, uh, Pearl is one of the biggest up and coming red pill content creators out there, and she just got flattened by Brittany. It doesn't help that I was actually in the process of doing the same thing, but uh, based on on a review that uh, that Abin Preach did on her, and and me catching that because again I don't listen to her else I might have started calling her out a while ago. I just don't, I don't have enough, I don't care. I don't ask fish how to fish. I'm already a fisherman. I got that part covered. I have a couple of other video clips in here. Let me let this play. No, through. Okay, so this is the, uh, let me see if, if she covered this in the other one. He was a millionaire. Like, it was just like. Okay, this is the full thing where she was talking about he was a millionaire. And I'm not going to play through it after all, because I think you guys got most of it. Uh, well, maybe there, wait, I think there was something in here I still wanted I still wanted everybody to hear. Let's play through this. If if there isn't, I'll edit it out of the final video. Yeah. Did he slide into your DM like, hey? Um, no, he commented on my video. And then then we met up like the next week or something. And then yeah. we like started basically dating like immediately. When did you sleep with him? Um, I met him early December. I slept with him like midway through January, maybe. That's what I wanted to hear. So she's saying she waited six weeks until like, she slept with him. But in the previous video, she said she went out on dates with dudes and would have been down for a hookup, except they didn't make a move. So that doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't seem quite right then, does it? And also, this dude had, now she can say, I didn't know he had two kids. I didn't know he had, he was trying to work things out with his ex. But again, in an earlier clip, she said, ladies, maybe you just have a bad picker. Maybe your, your, your man selector is bad. That's why you don't have success in dating. And that's why you pick bad guys. But she literally did the same thing herself then. Because she's the one that sent him the DM. She's the one that got things started. She's the one that started chasing after a millionaire. She Now, again, this may not be the same guy. It may not be the same guy. But it seems like things line up to where it is. But Pearly Things is doing exactly what she tells everybody else and all men. She's telling men what they want to hear, but 
her, she herself is chasing after a millionaire. She said he's fine, whether, whether we think so or not, we don't know who it is, but she thought he was fine. And so she shot her shot. She shot her shot with a one or three or five percenter. She dated him short term. She slept with him and now she's single again. How's that different than any other women we call out that don't get in a serious long-term relationship and stay with the guy before they're physical with him? She literally, is, she's, a five, she's a, a percenter chaser. She's a five percenter chaser. She just admitted it herself. Um, but we also like, we like lived together before we slept. I told you this story. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, Say, tell us again. Cause it, like we were basically, cause I helped him get an Airbnb. Cause I was like, why are you spending all this money on these hotels? That's crazy. Like yeah. I can't even imagine. Like, are you, are you nuts? Yeah. You, hotel, like living in, oh no. And I was like, this is Airbnb, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like basically staying at the Airbnb for like a month. Yeah. And I just... So she stayed with him at the Airbnb for a month, but they dated for six weeks before they slept together. So she's going to say that she stayed at his place or they stayed together in an Airbnb for a month and didn't sleep together. It's like what it, but people, I probably, that's probably not wise. You probably shouldn't spend the night and not sleep with a guy, but I've done that like more times than I can count. Boom. She says you shouldn't spend the night with a guy and not sleep with him, but I've done that more times than I'd like to count. At the Airbnb for like a month. Yeah. And I just like with it. But people, I probably, that's probably not wise. You probably shouldn't spend the night and not sleep with a guy. But I've done that like more times than I can count. So you, so you shouldn't spend the night and not sleep with him. So she's, so she's saying that if you spent, if you agree to get in the bed with a man and sleep there, that you probably should sleep with him. And then she turns around and says, and I've, I've, done that more times than I can count. So you're going to tell me you're crawling into bed with all these different dudes and just having sleepovers and you're not having sex with them? Guys, let me ask you. If you're dating a woman and she goes over or you, you've just started dating a woman or she's a, a female friend and she says, oh, I often crash over to guys' houses after dates or after nights at the club or after going to see them or traveling to see them but we sleep in the same bed and nothing happens. Would you believe them? Would you believe them? And if the answer is hell no, like most men would be, then why would you believe Pearl? What's the difference? I wouldn't believe her, would you? And if you don't believe her, then why are you listening to her for advice? Maybe not you directly, but why would people listen to her for advice? Now, I think this other video- um, and I've told the other video here I have is the fresh and fit thing. And then, yeah, here's the clip of, of her and that guy. So something doesn't seem to be adding up. And now all of a sudden she's the, she's done something right. And she's marketed, marketed herself very well. Because if you look at how quickly her channel has grown, how she's being interviewed, how she's interviewing many popular people. She knows what she's doing. I give her no hate for that. No hate. No hate for playing the game. And now magazines are doing interviews. Now, again, I, there's a lot of red pill content creators that have been out a lot longer than her. But why is it that she's gained all the followers? It's because she's female saying the same thing that all the red pill content creators have. Why is she getting the articles? It's because she's female saying all the things that the other red pill content creators have. But when you boil it down, she's no different than all the women she actually makes fun of, it seems. She's, she's said that she'd go on dates and she would have hooked up with a guy, but he didn't try to sleep with her. Maybe because he didn't care for her or didn't find her attractive or there was no chemistry, but she said she would have if he had made the move. She says she slept in more beds than she should have with men, but that she didn't sleep with them. Do you believe that? She's got all this life experience from the ages of 23 to, or 23 and a half to 26. In two years, she's garnered all this knowledge while being mostly single or in zero long-term relationships. 
what's going on? I think, I think there's a lot to, uh, 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 to think about here. I think you guys get the gist, gist of where I'm going against this. And why, why won't I call her out on it? Because I don't know. I have no proof of any of things uh, against anything that she's alleging. But she's also deleted or had deleted many of her TikTok channels. They've been taken down. Maybe they were. You know, they take down Andrew Tate's stuff. I'm sure a lot of people flag her stuff and, and probably get it taken down. But there's not much left on the internet to look up a lot of that stuff. But here's, and, and I have one more story to talk about here as I wrap this up. I know I'm going long tonight, but this, I got a lot to talk about tonight. I'll wrap it up with this. What do I think, what do I think Pearl, what do I think she should do? What do I think she should do? I think she should, and this is where you're going to get me controversial, and I think most of you will disagree with me. What she should do is exactly what she's doing right now. I think she should keep doing what she's doing. And I'll tell you why. Now, you guys are going to disagree with me, but I'll tell you why. Because grifters and people that are glam on, and, and actually the next story I'm going to talk about after this has a lot to do with this. People that glam on and people that latch onto things and then reword it and rebrand it and resell it, and they become more popular than the people that they got the information from, I'm okay with that. And I'll tell you why. Because if you don't think everybody in the LDHD TV community that's out there on TikTok, like Mulvaney and all these other people out there, right, that still have facial hair and they're, they're, they're becoming brand ambassadors and putting on makeup and all the other stuff, why do you think they're so popular? Because everybody's in on the grift. They want the views, they want the clicks, they want the love, they want the attention. And so everybody is piling in and spreading that message and it's becoming a contagion. Well, if women see Pearly becoming very successful with this and they say, I want a part of that too. Now it may take away from uh, people watching channels like mine and other men's stuff and that is bad, that is bad. But when you're in a culture war, Someone like Pearl is ammo, firing that message out. And if more people see, more females especially, see her doing what she's doing, more females will start to do it, and that will actually be a counter trend to what's going on from the feminists and the LDHD TV and everything else. I've always said if, if we're going to change any of this, if we're going to change the crazy laws, if we're going to ch change the hate against men and the, the, the women are all empowering and so on and so forth, the, the ones that are going to have to do it are, are women like Pearly Things or, or Pearl and her channel Pearly Things. The problem is, though, and this is the downside to it, the problem is, though, likely the only people watching her, hearing her, listening to her, and agreeing with her are men which mean other women aren't in on it. The only way I think that this actually does make any change is when other women start doing what she's doing and all of a sudden there's a choir of female voices out there that it becomes loud enough that people start taking notice other than maybe lonely men that want to hear this type of message. So I, I, think, I think what she's doing uh, likely is probably for money. I don't think she's doing what she espouses other women to do, which is pretty much grifting. And I also think I'm okay with her doing it as long as, as she continues to get other people involved and her message gets spread, uh, spread because ultimately all she's doing is regurgitating what she's heard from men. And I'll give you a good example of what I mean by this. The... Oops, I hit a button there. The good and the bad. This is a, this is a tweet uh, that has 4.7 million views, this, this video. I want you to listen to this woman's, what she says. And then I'm going to show you the grift. 
Feminism is a scam. A few years ago, I was an angry, blue-haired feminist. I once believed that male privilege was real and that I was a victim of the wage gap. Now that I understand the true motives of feminism, I know that this could not be further from the truth and that modern day feminism is a war on true masculinity. So far, she's saying all the right things. I used to be on the left. I used to be a blue-haired feminist. And now I'm back. And now I realize it's a war on men and masculinity. And I'm gonna tell you all the things that men wanna hear. Before women had the right to vote, most were stay-at-home wives, which meant they weren't working jobs and couldn't be taxed. Our overlords didn't like that. Rockefeller started funding feminist campaigns in media, and as a consequence of the movement, women started entering the workforce and leaving the home. Children would then be separated from their parents and sent to Rockefeller-funded schools to be indoctrinated by the state. No, so far, what, nothing she says is wrong. Let's be very clear about that. What she's saying is correct. All of this ultimately disrupting the family unit at its core. Feminism is defined as the belief in social, economic, and political equality of the sexes. But in the West, I must ask, what rights do men have that women don't? And now we get into the men's rights stuff. Now we get into the pro-men. I mean, all of it's kind of pro. A lot of it's actually anti-feminist. But when you start getting here, it starts turning pro-men. Modern feminists are convincing women that hookup culture, using hormonal birth control, and not shaving is liberation. That toxic masculinity is prevalent and the patriarchy must be dismantled. Through movies and media, we're taught that working for the man, climbing the corporate ladder, and paying tax is more empowering and valuable than raising the next generation. Women have lost touch with our natural loving instincts and birth rates are plummeting. So now her video goes on for a little bit longer. So she's, she's espousing the message, but I want you to see something here. This is her as a quote unquote feminist, right? And this is her not shaving her armpits and she's got blonde hair. And now she's giving out the pro male message. I'm gonna show you the tweet response that I responded to this video because this guy is like, wow, this lady's amazing. I'm gonna flick it past mine so you can't see mine just yet. And she says, thank you for the repost. Glad you like my video, 1600 likes. And this person's, oh, oh it's true. And somebody else is like, uh, uh, it doesn't hurt the message uh, that she's beautiful, not gonna lie. Uh, she's one of a kind, literally amazing human being. She's extremely based, Sebastian says, Abe, men's voices. Some jinx says she's not wrong though. Second oldest hominid. <laughs> she's right in getting people to realize the empowering message. And, and if before you know it, what do you see through here? All the comments, men, 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 men. But a lot of the likes and oh, she's great. And this is awesome and how empowering and it's all men. She's not spreading this message to anything really new when it comes to women. Well, here's my post. She had an OnlyFans, calm down. I even upscaled her necklace from the leftmost photo to show it's the same she was wearing in the video. I took this into Photoshop and she's got a little ruby in the middle of a round necklace and you can see it right here in a the few video. Years ago, you can see it right there in the video. It's literally the same necklace and she wears like two necklaces and you can see in this photo, I know it's hard for you guys to see. You can see in this photo, she wears two necklaces. It's the same woman. And you notice something? She had shaved armpit, she had shaved armpits here and she sure didn't have blue hair, did she? So this was after her, uh, I was on the left phase and I saw what they were doing to women between that step and now putting out this video, she put on content out on Only Fools. Grifting. I wanna know what you guys think. What do you think of the information you heard? Do you think any of it's legit? Do you still think that everybody's wrong about Pearl and she's just misunderstood? She went to business school for digital media and knew she wanted to become a content creator and get brand deals and everything else before, long before she ever even started her stuff. I don't know. I'll be interested to hear what you guys think about that. And then also let me know what you think about the grift. Is the grift, I mean, the grifting is bad, but if you can get enough women to grift on board and that starts being a cult, a counter message to the feminism, is that a good thing? Is it enough? Or do you think like me in many ways, the only people that are really listening to her are men 
and all they're doing is just happy to hear the message coming from a woman giving that content creator their their views and their their ad revenue and and she's just walking away laughing to the bank because she's telling men one thing and turning out to live a completely lit different life and and being like every other woman out there that we complain about and make fun of guys i'll leave it there uh it's been a long one i'll leave it there we will see you in the next one